Hi everyone, welcome to the third lesson of the week and this one is all about understanding perspectives in film. So since you have completed watching Rabbit Proof Fence, we need to talk about um, the film as a really significant um, popular culture text um, that really impacted society's view of a, a particular issue in history which was the stolen generation. Now, I'm going to have to most likely do this video in um, two parts because there's a lot to talk about and I want to go through it with you properly. Um, so this is part one, okay? And we're going to start by um, having a talk about Rabbit Proof Fence and maybe making a decision about whether it is really good history. So... Let's just go on to our lesson objective. So the lesson objective is to understand how representations in film can influence society's understanding of an important issue, such as a stolen generation. Now, remembering that the main focus of this unit is looking at representations. Remember that word representation is a representation of an issue or a person. Okay, so it is constructed. It's not entirely accurate. Um, it's just one version of something. It may not be realistic and sometimes it can be a negative representation or sometimes it can be positive. Okay, maybe it is a bit of both depending on your perspective. Now perspective is another um, word that we're going to look at in this lesson. And perspective, I've got the definition down here in the little box. It's a particular attitude towards um, a way of regarding something. Or basically, it's a point of view. And Rabbit Proof Fence was a controversial film at the time of release. And there were many different perspectives or points of view about whether or not the uh, movie actually depicted that time in history as correct. So let's have a look at um, some thoughts about Rabbit Proof Fence before we get started at looking at different perspectives. So first of all, Rabbit Proof Fence is an important film because it deals with a significant issue of um, Australian history, which is the Stolen Generation. Rabbit Proof Fence was released in 2002, and up until that time, nothing like it had been made. In fact, Australian society generally didn't know much about the Stolen Generation at all. So it really was important in bringing forth a really dark time in Australian history that hadn't been taught. It wasn't taught in um, the Australian curriculum in history. It's what we actually call hidden history. That is things that have happened in our past that I guess um, we feel uh, regret for and shameful for doing that and so it's not generally taught or talked about in our schools. So in that way rapid proof fence was really important for the time because it pre, um, presented an issue in a popular culture film that everybody could access and understand and it made a really great story because of course it is based on a true story. Um, so it was enjoyable for a lot of people to view and they found the movie very inspirational and moving, but it actually um, created a lot of controversy at the time. So what happened after Rabbit Proof Fence was released was there was a lot of debate and discussion around the idea of stolen generations. Many different perspectives were brought forward. So some people believe that it didn't even exist, that the stolen generation was just made up by Aboriginal elders. And of course, the Indigenous people themselves were saying, this happened to us. This is um, a, a kind of genocide. And we'll talk about that later. Um, and that they deserve to be compensated for the way that they were treated in the past. Um, so that caused a huge debate um, around Australia. And the government didn't really know what to do because they weren't willing to acknowledge that what had happened in the past for a number of reasons, but I assume they didn't want to take 
responsibility because they were worried about the outcomes and then what Indigenous people would request in terms of compensation for how they were treated in um, this part of history. So the other thing we need to talk about is um, that, well, I'm sorry, the next point here is probably what we were going to continue to discuss. Don't you just love my video lessons? Um, I was saying that it was influential in shaping people's knowledge because it provided a new knowledge for people and a new understanding of Australia's history and our identity and how we treated Aboriginal people and Indigenous people of the time. Um, a lot of people probably didn't know anything about this before and certainly hadn't seen it from the perspective of an Indigenous child who was taken from their family. So it um, is a really important, valuable film for everybody to watch and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it because it is actually one of my favourite films and it's a shame that we weren't together to, to watch it. Um, so I suppose we need to talk about the representations within the film because popular film, as we know, is only a constructed version of events. So it's a representation of the facts. It was based on historical research. It was based on um, Doris Hilkington's story, which um, is her mother's story. Her mother was Molly Craig. So it is based on her book. Um, and there was lots of research done into it. The screenwriter spoke to many members of the Stolen Generation and did a lot of reading of different people's memoirs and autobiographies from that time. But it is still just a representation of events. So in terms of making a good story, a good drama, they had to dramatise some of the events and show emotion through the characters and position um, the audience to feel a certain way. And how was it represent, um a good representation of the story? Um, well, we need to ask that question because when we have texts like this out in, the, in society, they have the power to influence us and make us think certain things about the world we live in. Um, so when we think about representations, we need to think about um, what is the issue that it is representing, okay? How are they representing it? So what kind of techniques are they using? And what importance does that have or what impact does that have on society? So we could say that um, definitely the issue that was represented was about the stolen generation. There are other things as well about family and home and um, all of those sort of things, but it represented um, the stolen generation and controversial issue through the eyes of an Indigenous girl. Okay, and we could say that the representation of Molly Craig was um, positive. She was inspirational. She was a heroine. We were seeing, um, we see her as a young girl who um, walks all the way home, takes her um, cousins and sister with her, and um, you know decides that home is the most important place to be, and she's not going to stand for what the the whites were trying to do for her at that time. So she has a very positive representation in the film. The other character, um, A.O. Neville, who they call Mr. Devil, um, is a negative representation. Um, the filmmaker positioned us to not like him, to not like what he's doing to these children. Um, and the interesting thing about those two characters are they are real people. They really existed. These things really happened to them. A.O. Neville um, documented a lot of Molly Craig's story in his own um, diaries, which was used as research for this film. He did really have those beliefs about half-class children and that he wanted to breed out the race of well, um, Aborigines, okay, and assimilate uh, partly white or half-class children into society and I know that sounds horrible and I really hate saying things like that because you know it, it's really it, terribly racist and offensive but that was the thinking at the time in the 1930s and they 
um, we get to recognise Indigenous Australians as um, people, okay, um, and members of society. That didn't come until the 1960s, 1967 referendum. Um, so at the time, this was their thinking, and it is wrong, and it's horrible. And so we would agree that A.O. Neville does need a negative representation because he wasn't trying to help them. He was trying to change a race or wipe out a race. Okay, so that's the two types of representations that were in the film. And what impact does that have on society? Well, I think we all learnt a lot more. We certainly empathise with the um, perspective of the Indigenous children. And, um, you know, we were moved by an inspirational story as well. So, as I said before, there's different perspectives on this film and whether or not it actually makes good history. A lot of people find the movie powerful and moving and they do accept its depiction of history as accurate because it was based on fact. Um, and yes, a producer does need to um, make a movie more emotional, I suppose, and more dramatic, but the events still happened. But there are different people who have different, different perspectives on whether or not this actually happened. And so they challenged the idea of this film. They challenged the representations of history and the story of the stolen generation. And they're saying that it does present an over-dramatised view. And then that's not fair because it positions the audience to feel something about an issue that isn't as bad a problem as they make it out to be in Rabbit Poo Fence. So we're going to look at two different perspectives and how that impacts our thinking and understanding. Um, I need to do that in part two because I talk too much. So I will see you in part two.